assignment questions to see similar questions that will help us answer some of those questions. Okay, so I hope um, we will finish by half past. It will depend as well. We can finish by six or by half past five. It will depend on the how tricky the questions are. Okay, so let's begin. Also, you need to have your tables ready because we're dealing with study unit eight and nine, which is confidence interval and hypothesis testing. So with confidence interval, you need to know that you need to go find the critical value um, either on the Z table or on the uh, T table, right? The same with hypothesis testing, you will need to know all the six steps of hypothesis testing. But not only that, you just need to know the basic properties of confidence interval as well as of hypothesis testing. So let's look at the questions. A random sample of 100 results in a, sam in a sample mean of 100. The population standard deviation is known to be 25. So if they tell you that the population standard deviation is known, always remember that we're using Z. Those are the things that you need to always uh, remind yourself. Uh, what is the value of the standard error, which then it means we need to find the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So what did they give us? Our n is 100. The standard deviation is 25. So you just substitute 25 divided by the square root of 100. 2.5, which is option B. 2.5. And like I said, there will be those ones where I don't have all the full information. There's nothing I can do about that. This we can answer. So question three asks the Department of Basic Education earlier findings from the survey with uh, your 90 learners, which is N of 90, and average time travel or average travel time, which means that is your mean from home to be at one of the school of interest. Assume that the population standard deviation of the learners population standard deviation. So it means they have given you sigma. So it is an, it is known. So we need to be using Z. Construct a 95% confidence interval. By now, you should know what 95% confidence interval mean in terms of the critical value. What is your critical value? If I don't get a response, then it means I, I'm going to assume that you don't know your critical values. And these are the things that you need to have a summary of because we have been speaking about them even during the sessions to say the critical values are very important. You need to know what the critical value for 95% is. 99% is, 90% is, and so on. So if you don't know how to find the critical value, remember 95% confidence interval is one minus alpha. And your alpha will be one minus 0 0.95, which is 0 0.05. To find the critical value, it's Z of alpha divided by 2, which is Z of 0, 0.05 divided by 2, which is Z of 0, 0.025. You go to the table on the negative side. You go look for the 
inside this table, you look for 0, 0,250 and then you go out to look for the critical values, which are your Z values, which will be equals to 1,96. That is your critical value. So your Z critical value is 1,96. And then you need to remember the formula that you need to have already summarized somewhere. You mean plus or minus your critical value of Z over alpha times the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square. N. I'm going to calculate or substitute the values. Um, we actually don't use population parameters, we use sample parameters. So you mean is 114 plus or minus your Z critical value of 1,96 times your standard deviation of 72 divided by the square root of N of 90. And you can go and calculate 114 plus or minus I want to, I can just say 1.96. I can calculate the standard, the margin of error. And the margin of error will be, in case in the exam they ask you to calculate the margin of error, you need to know what the margin of error is. The margin of error will be, 14.87534. I think the correct answer will be C. And then you just need to go and calculate the minus and the plus. So on the minus yeah, side. C. We'll have one one four negative minus. I got ninety nine point one one three and positive I got uh one two eight point eight eight. Option C. It is because there is nothing there. Okay, consider a T distribution with N uh, with the nine degrees of freedom. Which one of the following statement is correct? So now, if you have your degrees of freedom and they give you your, your alpha value, do not go to this question answers because now I'm giving you all the answers. If I Put the answers there. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Now, um, these are things T value, T value um, is not associated with the uh, critical values, but it is um, probably it is the critical value. That's what they are asking you. So let's go find the critical value for your alpha value of 0, 0,1. Okay, that's correct. And of 0, 0,05.
is also correct. Okay, so on the oh, sorry, my bad. Let's go to the table. You need to go to the what do you call this now? T table. So you will go to the T table and you're going to look for your degrees of freedom and your alpha field, right? And then choose whichever is correct. Yeah. And C, D, and E, you need to go find or calculate your and find out which one is correct in terms of terms of the confidence intervals, but we need to be very careful when it comes to these questions as well. I'm not sure if there was other information given. If not, then because these are the things that I'm not sure what they trying to get to with the between whether is this the critical value they say it lies between those two or they would have calculated the um the critical values for that but anyway so t of alpha and the degrees of freedom and this they say in the on the upper tail all right so if you think of it, this is the negative side and this is the positive side. On the positive side, it is on the upper. So let's not use this. Let's call this the upper and the lower, right? Let's explain it in this manner. So if you went and found your critical value on the upper tail it should be a positive value if you find it on the lower tail it should be a negative value so here the answer here is the t value associated with the lower tail of 0 0.13 is 1.383 so sorry to go to the t table it is true it is on the 1.3 but in terms of the critical values on the lower side it will be 1 minus 1 comma 383. In the upper, it will be 1, 383. That's what this is. So similar for a 0, 0.05, you go. Keep on going to the left because I still remember my tables on the left, which is 1, 33. It will be 1, 3. Yeah, is it three or eight? Eight three three. Eight three three. On this, on the lower side, it would have been negative. On the upper side, it will be positive. One comma eight three three. So that will be correct, and this will be incorrect because it's positive. That's the two difference in terms of the two questions. For a ninety-five percent confidence interval you will need to go find your z or your t alpha divided by 2, which will be uh, 0, 0.025 and the degrees of freedom of 9. So let's go to 0, 0.025 and it is 2,2622. It will be negative 2,2622. 
and on this side it will be positive two comma two six two two so it is between the two values that is correct for a 98 percent it will be uh, a 98 percent alpha divided by two which is 0 comma 2 divided by 2 0 comma 0 2 divided by 2 is 0 comma 1 right 0 comma 0 1 so we go to 0 comma 0 1 0 comma 0 1 and it is 2,82, it will be negative 2,82 and positive 2,82. 2,8, there we go. And for A99, it will be T alpha of 0, 0,02 divide, 0, 0,01 divided by 2. Uh, what is 0, 0,01 divided by 2? It will be 0, 0,005, right? Three, two zeros after comma. So therefore, go to 0, 0,005 and your critical value will be on the lower side. It will be negative 3,249 and on the positive, it will be 3,29. Let's see, 3,25, so which is 49, which is 25. Zero, which means this is correct. The only correct, uh, incorrect answer would be the one with the negative. So we need to, you need to always think about it in this way. If they ask you for the lower side, lower side is on the negative side, upper side is on the positive side. So the incorrect answer here is number one. Moving on to the next question. Consider the following application exercise from a, the previous assignment. Most school from school reported the decline of absence following from education department, learner transport program and nutrition program. In a sample of 150 schools, so we have our N, from Joe Prabi District Municipality, 114 schools reported a decline. That is our X. In the number of learners absent, construct a 95% confidence interval for the population proportion. So some of these things are keywords to let you know what you are calculating. So we need to calculate our P, which is X over N. And from there, we need to calculate P plus or minus Z alpha divided by two. Remember, for the proportion, we always use Z. And multiply that with P one minus P divided by N with the standard error. So calculate P, what is P? What did you get? Are you still there? Zero comma nine six. Huh? Point seven six. Zero comma seven six. Zero comma seven six. Zero comma seven six. Then substitute into the formula zero comma seven six plus or minus. We need to go find the critical value of ninety. Do you know what the critical value of 90 is? This one is one of those special ones. If you don't know now, I don't know which one of the critical values is special for a 0 0.10 divided by two will give us the Z value of 0 0.05, which falls between two values. Remember that. When we go to the Z value, zero comma, it falls between those two values because there are five point difference between them. And the critical value will be a special one, which will be one comma six 
four, five. Remember that? That is the only special critical value. So, which is one comma six, four, five, four, eight, ninety percent confidence interval. One comma six, four, five. Because for the others, the other one is two comma three three and the other one is two comma five eight but you need to know which one um would be and ninety five percent is always one comma nine six times zero comma seven six times one minus zero comma seven six divide by one hundred fifty six <coughs> zero comma seven zero three. And the lower limit? Zero comma seven zero three. Zero comma seven zero three. And in the upper limit? Zero comma eight one seven. Zero comma eight uh, two. Zero comma eight. eight one, we can we can keep three decimals. Seven. Okay, zero comma eight one seven. Zero comma eight one seven. So let's see because the answers here are in three decimal. Don't get distracted. Look at the options. If they are in three decimal, keep your last answers as three decimals. If they are two decimal, keep them as two decimal. So the answer option here B. will be option B. Are we good or are we happy? Okay, this we will do with the other um, assignment question uh, because they didn't give all the all the um, information that you would need. Like, um, how do we calculate the rest of the other statements? I'm gonna use the other question to do that or the other assignment questions. Okay, suppose the calculated test statistic is a one-sided test. This is very important. We are in the hypothesis testing, and that test statistic is given by minus 2.66. So they don't, and they say in the lower tail. So in the lower tail, it will be on the less than side. If they say in the upper tail, remember upper tail will be on the upper side, it's in the greater than. So if they say in the lower tail, uh, it's a less than. So it means in the hypothesis testing, uh, the, the thing was less than, all right? Suppose that the population standard deviation is known, so it means we're using Z. What will be the p-value? That is the probability of Z less than minus 2.66. That's in a, in a way that we have understand the probability, we can ask the question. P value is your probability value. So go find the probability on the table, on the Z table. So we go to the negative side table and we look for minus 2.6 on the left and 6 at the top. 0.66, so 2.6 on the left and 6 at the top where they both meet. They meet at um, 0.0039. 0 
then the answer is 0, 0,0039, which is option C. That's as straightforward as that. If it was in the upper tail area, what we would have done? We would have subtracted this value from one, right? One. In the upper tail. In the upper tail, we would have said one minus 0, 0,0039. Always remember that. So there's everything that you've learned in the basic pro in the normal distribution, you still need to carry it to be when you answer questions in the hypothesis testing as well. This one I'm gonna skip. We'll use the other assignment for it. Okay, so coming to the next question. Various literacy group recommended the reading. Oh, okay, already I've given you the answers. I didn't even look at the answers, but it's fine. They uh, recommended a reading speed of 169 words per minute for grade nine. And a grade five is com grade five teacher is convinced that the average reading speed for his class is more than, uh, which then helps us with the alternative uh, recommended uh, speed. The sample size is 36 for grade five learners and the average reading speed is 175 and the standard deviation is 22 and we need to also take into consideration the information given. So because they say here the sample of 36 grade five learners and the average is 175 with a standard deviation of 22. Therefore, it means everything is from the sample. So we are given the mean or the mean of a sample, it's X bar. And we are given the standard deviation of a sample, which is X. Therefore, it means your population standard deviation is unknown. And therefore, it means anything that we're going to be doing, we'll be using the T table. Because this is a T distribution question. You are required to test the teacher's hypothesis testing at 5% level of significance. So they give you your alpha value um, that you need to test that the average reading speed is more than uh, the recommended speed and choose the correct statement below. So our alternative states that the average reading speed is more than, right? That's what they say. And we know that in terms of the population, the speed was 176. So therefore our null hypothesis will read that the mean is equals to 167 because your null hypothesis always has an equal sign. It doesn't matter which sign we use, as long as it's an equal sign. Uh, it should be fine. Looking at the question and the statement, most of this, they are asking you to make a decision. So therefore, it means there are a couple of things that you would have done before you can answer this question. So let's, because this is the last statement, it's your conclusion. The first statement is state your null hypothesis and alternative. The second is to identify the things that you are given. I've already identified most of them. I'm not going to worry about that. The second one is to find the critical value, or the third one is to find the critical value. So let's go find the critical value. So because the sign here is greater than, therefore it's a one tail test. So our critical value, T of alpha, and the degrees of freedom. And our degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So we have t of 0, 0,05 and n minus 1, where is our n? Our n is 36. So it's 36 minus 1 is 35. So this is 36 minus 1, which is 35. So we need to go to the t table look under the degrees of freedom of 35 and 0, 0,05 at the top. So let's go. T table. We're looking for thirty-five.
we're looking for 0, 0, 0,05 and 35. So it means we are on this color. And 35. 1.6896. It's 1.6896. That is our critical value. We will use that in making a decision because we know that our it's in the upper tail area, so we can automatically create our region of rejection, which is one comma six eight nine six. So we're going to use that in our rejection statement. Now, then. Uh, fourth statement is to find out which one are we using. We're doing a T test, so we're going to have to calculate our T distribution, so which is the sample mean minus the population mean divided by your sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N, which is our standard error. So our sample mean is 175 minus our Population mean is always stated in the question, in the hypothesis statement, divide by the standard deviation, plus 22, divide by the square root of n, which is 36. So do the calculation. What do you get? What is your T? Um, 173.73. Mm -mm. Your T? It cannot be 100. Mm -hmm. Because if 175 minus 167 should be 8. So you're telling me that 22 divided by 30 square root of 36. I got negative 3.226. No, it cannot be negative. 75 is bigger than 176. Two. One Sorry, Lizzie. Um, is that uh, it's seven one seventy five minus one eighty seven or it's minus one sixty seven? Oh, minus one sixty seven. It's one sixty seven. My handwriting is that bad. Yeah, it's ugly. Shame. <laughs> That's why we use computers. Okay. Yeah. I got two point. So the answer is two point one eight. One, one five one. Uh -huh. Ah, but mine it's 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 two point one five one. Yeah. I also got two point one eight one eight. One eight one eight one eight one eight two. Yes. Yes. So please check. This is 22 divided by the square root of 36. Mm -hmm. So the answer should be 2.1818. Yeah, right? true. Okay, it's correct. Actually, yeah, your yeah. handwriting, I can't read it. I said the square root of 35. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, gosh. I must read out the values loud then. So where does 2.18 fall on this distribution? It falls under the rejection area because anything that falls in the shaded area we're going to reject the null hypothesis right so let's we're going to eliminate any statement that doesn't have reject on it so because 2.18 falls in the rejection area 
So we know that not enough information won't be the statement. Do not reject, do not reject. So we are left with two statements, A and B. Yeah, all right. She said, we're going to expire after one month. Please mute yourself. All right, can you delete one more? Okay, so, uh, mm, so we are left with two statements. So the first one says, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the grade five reading uh, speed is more than 167. Number two, it says, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the average reading speed is not significantly different from 167. Which one, A or B? Uh, A. Do you all agree with A? The statement is A. So you just need to make sure that if you you know all the six steps of hypothesis testing. Uh, in the exam, you can get questions like this, or they can ask you questions where every option is one of the each uh, hypothesis statement. So you just need to know how to do the hypothesis testing. Okay, so let's look at another question. So this one, we will use the assignment as well. Don't worry if I skip it. Uh, most of the school nutrition uh, decides, uh, reported a decline in the number of absences from the education, transport, learner, transport, and nutrition program. In a sample of 200 schools, so your N is 200, from Umzinyat district, 72% reported a decline, which is our P, uh, in the number of learners absent. The district manager is adamant that the population proportion, which is our high uh, of school that reported the decline in the uh, number of absences, is different from 78%. Formulate a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. So our null hypothesis, if I can help you, because it says different, your null hypothesis will state that the mean is, or the proportion is 0 0.78. Your alternative will say that the proportion is not different from 0 0.78. That's your null hypothesis and alternative. And then it says at 5% level of significance, which is alpha, which one of the following statement is incorrect? So yeah are all the steps of the hypothesis. So we already stated the null hypothesis and alternative. Step number two, state whatever you are given. I've already stated that your P is 72, your alpha is 5%. Uh, we, we, um, yeah, because it's proportion, what type of a test are we doing? We're doing a Z test. So we need to calculate the proportion because the next one, oh, sorry, the critical value, or oh, we don't have to calculate the critical value because we are going to use the p-value as well, but we can calculate the critical value. Uh, the null hypothesis is rejected. We can conclude that, and the alternative hypothesis will state that. So we can uh, look at those uh, statements separately, or we can do the hypothesis. So let's do the Z test. Uh, let's calculate the test statistic. So our test statistic, because after calculating the test statistic, we'll need the p value. So the test statistic will be P minus the population proportion divided by your population proportion, one minus population proportion divided by N. So Substitute the values. Our sample proportion is 0 0.75 or 72. 
let me rewrite that so that people don't blame my hand rightly. Zero point seven two minus zero point seven eight divide by the square root of zero point seven eight times one minus zero point seven eight divide by two hundred. So calculate the I get negative 2.04. Eh? Yeah, I'm also looking at the answers now. I'm seeing that. The answer here is negative. Zero comma. Is it zero comma or two comma zero four? Two comma zero four. Uh, but it's zero comma four eight, right? Two comma zero five, which is five, right? So now, because uh, we are dealing with the Z test, so this is correct. We're looking for the incorrect statement that is correct. Let's go to E. E says the alternative is that the population proportion is not equals to 78. We know that that is correct. We've stated it in the null hypothesis. Now let's go find the p-value, uh, which is question B. B, we need to find the p-value so that we can make a decision because the decision says, the decision rule, if we're going to apply it, says if your p-value is less than alpha, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. So that is the rule. It's not a final thing. It's a rule that we will use to make a decision. So in order for us to answer B, C, and D, we need to find the p-value so that we can use this rule to answer that. So let's go find. The question is asking for the incorrect. I think this was an error on their statement, but it's fine. We're not looking for that much. So let's go find the p-value. So the other thing you need to always remember with the p-value is if your test is a two-sided test and the z-test is negative, we're going to get the value on the table and then we're going to add it together because the p-value for a two-sided test, there are two sides. So we're going to go and find this using the z-value, the probability. So minus 2.05 on the table, is a table on the negative side. We're looking for minus 2.0. And then at the top, we're looking for 5, where they both meet. That is the p value, the one p value. So it's 0 0.0202. So 0 0.02. 2, 0.2 and the site 0. Oh, sorry. This area here must not write it at the bottom. I must write it at the top because this represents the, the area. So this area here is 0 0.0202 and this area here is 0 0.02. 0, 02. So we need to add both of them together. So our p value will be equals to 2 times 0 0.0202, which is equals to 0 0.0404. Or you can say 0 0.0202 plus 0 0.0202. So this is 
also correct in terms of our answer. Okay, so now we need to base our decision on the p value. So let's see. Our decision rule says if the p value is less than the alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So let's see. Our p value is 0, 0,0404. Our alpha value is 0, 0,05. So this value is less than, therefore we reject the null hypothesis. Let's see. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is rejected, which is correct. So if the null hypothesis is rejected, therefore it means there is no different. So the population proportion the, is not different. Right? So we can conclude that the population proportion that reported a decline in the is significantly different from I think this question, uh, there is an errata on this question because it cannot be that all of them, uh, but this is the incorrect one. So this would have been because, oh, sorry, it's different. It's saying the same thing, sorry, my bad. This is also correct because it's different from It is different, it's not the same. It is different from 0, 0,08 because we are saying, yeah, we're saying it is the same. Uh, the null hypothesis that we are rejecting that it is equals to 0, 0,8. It's the opposite of the alternative which says it is different. So we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the population proportion is different, is significantly different from 0, 0,08, which is also correct. So if all statements are correct, then there is no incorrect statement. Is it, is, is, is it minus or, or the, because option A says it's, it's, a, it's a positive no, number. Yes. Does it matter? No, it does matter. So yes. So this is positive, you are right. This is, should be the incorrect statement. It should be minus two comma, I didn't pay attention to the minus. We found that it's minus two comma zero five. So this is positive. The answer should be minus. Yes, this is the incorrect one. Sorry, my bad. My bad. Okay. So this is correct, yes. But test statistics is the incorrect one. Should be minus two. Oh gosh. All right. Let's then look at those other missing questions. How do we answer them? So my are we done with the questions? Yes, we are at the end, right at the end. Uh, okay. Okay, some of the questions I said, we will pick them up from here. I can start from the bottom and then we go up. Um, okay, so this is the same as what we just went through. I'm not going to bother too much. So let's look at this one. It says, in a sample of 100, the sample proportion of 0, 0,3 to consider the following hypothesis and calculate the p-value. And I think we have done that, but no, we didn't. Choose the correct answer from the list of options. This is similar to the question that was cut off, this one. No, the other one. I think it was in the null, in the hypothesis, this one where they were asking you to find the p-value, right? So, if we need to go find the p-value, the very important thing there is the sign in your alternative. So this is a mistake here. There should be a, on, an alternative. So we need to go find the p-value and because we're dealing with proportions, so 
we need to calculate first the z value p minus the population proportion divided by the square root of your population proportion one minus population proportion divided by n our population proportion is 0 0.4 our sample proportion which is our p is 0 0.32 so 0 0.32 minus 0 0.4 divided by the square root of 0 0.4 times 1 minus 0 0.4 divided by n of 100. So what do you get? Minus 1.632. Okay, so we keep two decimals, so it's minus 1.63, right? So we need to go back to the sign. It is a lower tail, it's less than. So the value we find on the table, that is the p-value that we are looking for. So let's go minus 1.63. Go to the Z table, look for minus 1.6. Three. They meet. That is your p value, which is zero comma zero five one. Okay. Which is option C. So in your assignment, they will have given you your sample depending and your population proportion as well. I'm not sure if, because on this question, it was cut off. It was cut off, but probably it would have been a, you know, it would have been another question because depending on your N, and your pro sample proportion, you would have calculated your p-values differently. Okay, so what other question, or the one with the plus or minuses? And the question would have read like this. Consider a two-sided test with 5% level of significance and a degrees of freedom of 25, right? So our alpha is 5%, our degrees of freedom, DF, is 25. And they want you to find, and yeah, our population standard deviation is unknown, therefore it means automatically when they talk about degrees of freedom, you should know that we're talking about um, T. So because it's a two-sided test, we have to divide our alpha by two and the degrees of freedom. So it will be T of 0, 0,05 divided by two and the degrees of freedom of 25. If they didn't give you the degrees of freedom, they would have given you N and you can calculate your degrees of freedom by saying N minus one. So here they gave you the degrees of freedom. So there's no need to take this and subtract it from one. Right. So this you need to find 0, 0,025 and 25. So we go to the T table. T table. And we look for 0, 0,025. And you look for 25. 2.0595. 2.0595. 2.0. Now I forgot. 0, 
95. So if we round it off to two decimal, it will be 2.06. Option A. Zero six, and it will be option A. Okay, what other questions we cut off that we couldn't do? It was this one. Uh, we probably do have a full question. And here is the question. In a sample of 36, the sample mean is 83. It is also known that the population standard deviation is 16. You are required to use this information to test the following hypothesis. So the mean is, the null hypothesis states that the mean is less than 80. The alternative says the mean is greater than 80. So it's a one-sided test and it is in the upper tail. Okay, so. Um, we are given the population standard deviation, so then it means we're going to be using Z. Uh, and we can answer all these questions step by step. So the test statistic, let's start there. So your test statistic for Z will be your sample mean minus your population mean divided by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So that is our sample mean is 83 minus our population mean is always stated in the hypothesis, which is 80 divided by the population standard deviation, which is 16 divided by the square root of 36. This is 36, not 38, you know? 36. So let's calculate. I get one point one two five. Yes, 1.125. Now let's keep it to two decimals. 1.13. One three. Three. One oh, sorry, this is three decimals. Sorry, my bad. Let's keep it all of the decimals, but it's fine. We can answer the question. I just wanted to keep it to two decimals because the next question is to go find the p-value, and with the p-value, we need two decimals. But we can see that this is the incorrect statement, right? So this is not correct. Um, anyway, let's continue with all the other statements. The p-value, we need to go find the p-value. So remember that it's greater than. So therefore, to find the p-value here, we're going to say 1 minus the value we find on the table. And the value, we're going to find the p-value on the table based on 1 comma 1 theory. So you go to 1 comma in the positive side, 1 comma 1, 3. So where they both meet, which is 0 comma 8708. 0 comma 8708 and the answer is says zero comma one two nine two. So our p-value is not right. 
as what? Well. There's something wrong then. One comma one three. That's what we got, right? One comma one three. Unless they use a different p value. Whoever did this, so this should be 0, 0,12, 0, 0,12, 9, 2. That's what you said. Yes. And there was something wrong with the question. Probably. Okay, at 10% level of significance, the rule is to reject the null hypothesis. So we will, re then, no, it will not be. They re reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is greater than 1.186. So here they assume that you would have calculated the critical value. So the critical value here will be of 10% uh, because it's a one-sided. So it will be 0, 0,1. 10% will be 0, 0,10. Uh, and then you will go inside the table and look for 0, 0,1. Zero comma one, zero comma one, zero. It will be two, uh, one point, one point two eight. That will be one point two eight. And because it's on the upper tail, then we would say 1.28 would be on the upper tail on this side, and therefore it will fall 1.285. If that is the Z value, it will we will reject the null hypothesis. So you reject the null hypothesis, therefore the, hence the statement is also correct. Because it says at ten percent, the rule is to reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is equal or greater than one point two eight, which is correct. At this point, we have the only correct answer. And um, oh yeah, you know why this is uh, probably the p value that they found there. They used. Uh, 1,28, which is 1,29. If you go there, you might find that this will be the p-value. But we can double check that later. Uh, at 10% significant, the null hypothesis is not rejected. Uh, no. uh, in terms of in terms of the true statement that we have here in front of us. So if our p-value is less than so. Our p value is 10%. Uh, sorry, our alpha is 10%, so it's 0, 0,10, and our p value is 0, 0,12 or 13. We can call it 13, so it's bigger than the, the level of significance. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So, this statement also is correct. So, we do not. Reject the null hypothesis. And this is an upper tail area, which is correct. So let's double check number B because I'm going to, I'm 100% I'm sure that P value they used 1.28. So let's see if we use 1.28. So we'll need to go to 1.29. 1. 1.29. 1.2. Oh, sorry. On the positive side, one point. Let's remove all this. 
1.29 is 0, 0,8997. 1 minus 0, 0,8997. If you take that, 1 minus 0.8997 equals. No, it's also not because then that is 1003. I don't know how they got the... Um, used 0 0.08, they're not 9. Oh, sorry. So that would be 90, but it's still not going to work. 9015, we use that, it's 9015. What do you get? Yeah, it's still not correct, Liz. It's zero comma zero nine eight five. Yeah. Um uh, I don't know. Probably there was an errata on this question as well. Because their answer is option A, and we know that that is also not correct. Um, unless if we didn't calculate the right, but I not so many people in the same room can get the question wrong. So 83 minus 80 divided by the, our standard deviation is 16, it hasn't changed. And our N is 36 the square root of 36 and 1.125. I don't know why they would have get gotten 1.28. But anyway, so that they said this was their incorrect answer. We left with seven minutes. Um, which other question? Okay, so this one we did do. And I'm going to assume the other questions that we didn't answer would be the one way we calculate. Okay, let's see if we can calculate one of this. So we can use this one as another example. Doesn't matter whether you see the, the VIPs. So construct a 99% confidence interval for the population mean income. You are given the sample size of 50 and the income of 3,500 on average. So that would be our sample mean with the standard deviation. So this will be the sample standard deviation S and we need to construct the 99%. You need to be able to know and read the question and understand what is it that you are given in the question. Whether are you given the population standard deviation or are you given the sample standard deviation because that is very important it will help you know which one are you calculating so in this instance we need to find the mean plus or minus t alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom as divided by the square root of n so we need to go find the critical value so the critical value t Alpha of 99%, which means is 0, 0,01 divided by 2 and n minus 1, and our n is 50 minus 1. So, therefore, our critical value we will find t of 0, 0,05. Sorry, my bad. What is 0 0.01 divided by 2 It's 0, 0.005. 0, 0.5, it's 0, 0.5 and 49. So we need to go to the TV. The values of T. 
and look at the last column and 49, which will be on the next page. 49, which is 2,68. Comma six eight. So we will substitute into the formula three thousand five hundred plus or minus two comma six eight times our standard deviation of a thousand divided by the square root of fifty. And you can find your lower limit and your upper limit. I've got upper limit three eight seven nine comma zero zero. Yeah, it's option A. Yeah, A. The lower limit is three one two zero. Option A. Three, three, one, two, zero point nine nine. And the upper limit. Is. Uh, three, eight, seven, nine point zero one eight nine. So which is zero. So it's option A. Okay, so we left with two minutes, but you should be able to. Let's double check something because I think there was another one way we skipped. Uh, okay, so these are almost similar, so you should be able to answer any of this confidence interval. It's only this one way. I don't have a full question to know how they would have asked you. Otherwise, uh, you can practice with other questions that I will post there, so you need to always know. So in case they ask you to calculate a margin of error, you need to be able to know that always your margin of error will be the value after the plus or minus on any equation. So oh, okay, I'm not. Z. Alpha divided by two and population standard deviation over the square root of n. This is your margin of error. If you calculate in the mean, Plus or minus your T alpha and the degrees of freedom with S divided by the square root of N. This is your margin of error. Right? So if they ask you questions like that, you should be able to know which one to use or calculate. And for the population for the proportion, it will also be the same. Because it will be. Only this is your, your margin of error. So depending on the question. So for example, this one, they're asking you to find the margin of error at 99%. And they give you the sample, the sample mean, and the population standard deviation. So therefore, you're going to use this formula, not this one. Right? So that they might do. I'm going to use number one, this one. So therefore, your margin of error to answer this question will just be your z alpha divided by two Sorry, times. We can't really hear you. Can you uh, mute someone? Uh, I don't know who is unmute. Maybe 
protected themselves. So, can uh, open. So you will use that. So for a ninety nine percent confidence interval, you will need to always remember that your z of zero comma zero one. Divide by two, which is Z of zero comma zero zero five. You will go to the table or you need to always remember that it is the same as zero comma zero. So the negative side to zero comma zero zero five. Five. Three. It's 2.3. 2.58. Let's see, 0 0.005, it will be 2.58. So that will be 2.58. So you will say 2.58 multiply by your population standard deviation is 15 divided by the square root. Three point eight seven B. Okay, B and E have the same value, and so there was an error on this one. So they are the same. The answer was 3.87. So, and that completes the revisions for our assignments. Okay. Are there any questions relating to content of study unit six, seven, eight, and nine up to where we are right now? Is there something that you're still unsure of? If none, then I'm going to stop the recording right here. And